G'day guys, Happy New Year 2022 and in this video we are going to compare the second largest LIC in ASX called Argo Investment with a ticket code ARG and an iShares ETF provided by BlackRock with the ticket code ILC. This ETF includes top 20 companies in ASX. This video is really to address does the structure matter at all? We know that Argo Investment has been around for more than 70 years and BlackRock iShares ILC has been around for about 10 years. Therefore, that's why I'm doing this comparison because we have quite a lot of data to consider it to be quite a long-term investment. Just a quick point on the difference between ILC and ETF. We know the structure is different. Uh, BlackRock's ILC are only investing in about 20 companies, whereas Argo investing in about 100 selections of top ASX companies and ILC provided four times a year distributions as opposed to Argo provided two times a year. The franking credits for BlackRock's ILC varies. It's not always 100% franking level like Argo provided. So that to some people may be a disadvantage of investing with an ETF structure. We're going to definitely compare the distribution yield over the 10 year period and also the unit price growth over a 10 year period. How we do this is that we're going to pick a particular period of time, in this case around November 2011, and say we purchase Argo Investment and BlackRock's ILC at the same time. Will it give us a similar return in 10 years time? Say for this case, Argo shares was priced at $5.08. And after about 10 years time, the share price has gone up to about $10.20. And long story short, we have the results for Argo Investment on the bottom. The unit price growth from $5.08 to $10.20 in 10 years. That's about 6.5% per year unit price growth. Whereas the distribution yield on average over a 10 year period average is 5.7 percent the franking level is definitely 100 percent and on average the total expense of argo is about 0.18 percent that is very good it's very low cost moving on to blackrock's ilc the unit price growth is not as great it's about 4.4 percent per year it's about two percent difference and the average distribution yield interestingly slightly higher by 6.1 percent on average over a 10 year period. However, the distribution franking level, it varies over the 10 year period. And that is due to the ETF structure that they have. The management fee as advertised is 0.2% per year, which is similar to Argo investment. And if you're interested to look at a wider ASX 200 ETF, I already list out the results for IOZ as well. So what does that mean? Does that mean passive investment with the indexings with ILC or IOZ yield similar return to Argo investment? From our findings, it sounds like it is. The only main difference is on the structure, how the taxation and the franking level distributed to the investor and also BlackRock's ILC over quarterly payments for the distribution so four times a year whereas Argo offered twice a year so which one is your pick an Argo LIC or a BlackRock's ETF in my opinion they both serve an important role in ASX valuation because what this study shows is that over a 10 year period the combination of passive and active management resulted in a dividend yield of about 5.7% over a 10-year period. And since Argo has been around longer, so about 70 years, and even AFIC has been around more than 90 years, people show more confidence to Argo and AFIC as opposed to ATF like ILC, who's been around for only about 10 years. I hope you find it useful and thank you.